Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Byron's back in Africa on the Caprivi, hunting crocodile. Plus, we also review the Mauser MO3. We rejoin Byron on his expedition with brother and sister PH team Lano and Elaine in the Caprivi Strip. They've already led their team on a successful hunt for big hippo bulls and now crocodile is the intended quarry. It has been a challenge with the water as high as it has been, but after a few days in search of hippo, they now have a good feel for the likely locations. Peter is first up. Lano talks him through the task at hand. First shot, yeah. reload immediately, shoot again, okay? With three big crocs located around a bend in the channel, Lano and Peter ready their rifles. The plan is to slowly drift back down, taking a shot when they come into view. Are you ready? With four crocs to choose from, Lano indicates to Peter which one to take. Shoot. Backup shots ensure the beast is anchored. If it slips into the water, there is no getting your trophy back and more importantly, ensures an ethical kill. Okay. Okay. Let's, go. Let's go get him. With a switch of rolls, Milan is now behind the rifle. It's not long before they find another croc, but it's too small. The second croc they come across is a shooter, and both Lano and Milan man their rifles. Yeah, we must just wait for it. Good. It's a tough shot with a long drift in to prevent spooking this wary predator. Okay, Milan. Shoot again. The brain shot presents itself and Milan anchors the croc. Job done. Okay, it's good. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the three hunters now have their trophies, but with the light fading, Martin will have to wait another day. Lano, however, reassures him he will get his chance. Look, this, what we've seen today, this places that we've been today, we've seen a lot of crocodiles, so we'll definitely keep on coming up this for the crocodile. As darkness falls, the team is still a long way from home. This is us just heading back in the darkness now. We managed to shoot quite a nice crocodile, uh, but it was just at the last light. So we're, we're tanking it back as fast as we can while we can still actually see what we're doing. We've left the uh, big floodlight back at camp, so we've only got the, the head torches that we're wearing and uh, a couple of small flashlights. Um, we're only about half a K now, so hopefully we'll make it back just in this last light. The final day of hunting dawns, and it's Martin's one chance to get a croc. Every year the concessions are surveyed and quotas allocated for each species to ensure no over-exploitation occurs. This is the last permit available in the area. Yesterday's hunt has given the team vital info on where to head. They travel to the far edge of the concession to find the small sandbars protruding above the high water of the Chobi. It's here where these cold-blooded reptiles like to spend the day, basking in the sunshine. Lano and Elaine take Martin on land and stalk in. There is no shortage of crocs, but none are suitable to shoot. Eventually they find a mark. It's back into the boat to drift slowly downstream and hopefully get a chance. Thank you. 
The shot is good and the croc is anchored to the spot. Lana confirms that shot placement is the key to any croc hunt. We've seen from this last week that uh, taking a shot to anchor a crocodile is no easy task. Can you go over the, the shot placement so that we can see exactly where you should be taking aim? Yeah, sure, no problem. Yes, a crocodile is most probably the most difficult animal to, to, to hunt um, because of the, the small brain and uh, the flat body. Uh, a sidal shot, preferably to break the spine. If you can see the crocodile's got a little smile here. And you just go behind that smile. That should be the perfect shot and that should break its neck and its spine. You can see here's a spot, uh, a shot through. That also break a spine. And the one at the back also went through the spine just to anchor it. So that would be the sidal shots. If you move to the front of the crocodile, uh, the brain of the crocodile is about the size of a, of a golf ball. So you have to be very precise in where you are shooting. If you can see the two eyes of the crocodile, you can basically just aim between the eyes. The golf ball size brain is sitting on the top here, where that little protection is, to aim it and then you will hit the brain. So as you can see a very very difficult shot and making crocodile definitely not one of the easiest animals in Africa to hunt. Baron there avoiding the jaws of death. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The government has announced that it is delaying the badger culls in Gloucestershire and Somerset until 2013. NFU President Peter Kendall said badger numbers were higher than estimated in the cull areas and there was a high risk of falling short of the cull numbers needed to demonstrate that the method worked. In a statement to MPs, Environment Secretary Owen Patterson emphasised that this was not a governmental U-turn, saying his department remained committed to the cull. Wildlife laws are fractured and inconsistently applied across the UK, says a new report by a parliamentary watchdog. The Environmental Audit Committee said that wildlife law has become so complex that prosecutions fail and even specialist professionals struggle to apply the law effectively. Committee Chair Joan Wally called current laws a mess. This comes after the Law Commission launched a widespread review of wildlife legislation with the aim of simplifying it into a single statute. Royal Mail has published the responses to its proposed ban on carrying firearms and firearm components, most of which were against the ban. While the final decision is yet to be made, Royal Mail said it is not including air gun pellets in its definition of ammunition and that its definition of guns for sporting use will be altered to exclude Section 5 firearms. We'll bring you the latest news when it emerges. Nightsight has announced the return of its demonstration evenings for this coming winter. The free-to-attend events give shooters the opportunity to try out a Nightsight unit in the dark at 200 yards, at a range of locations across the UK. The next events will take place at Redbeck Shooting in West Yorkshire tomorrow and Ronnie Sunshine's in Hertfordshire on Wednesday. The Northern Ireland Assembly has approved an exemption to the tail docking ban under the Welfare of Animals Act Northern Ireland 2011 for working gun dogs. The regulations are due to come into effect on the 1st of January and the exemptions cover spaniels, terriers and any other breed of dog used for hunting, pointing or retrieving and combinations of those breeds. That was the Shooting Show News. Today we're going to be looking at the Mauser MO3. Uh, this particular rifle is in 243, and on the range it's shot pretty well. We're going to see this in a little bit later uh, when I shoot a few groups with it. Um, to give you a, a little bit of a, a rundown, uh, this, like a lot of European rifles uh, these days, is an interchangeable barrel system. You've got a solid chassis and two hex screws underneath which undo and allow you to change uh, the barrels in order to change calibers. Changing the barrels on the MO3 is a very simple affair. It's supplied with a, a torque driver and you simply insert it inside the, the torque screws, undo them without dropping it, undo them to the end, and 
and with the bolt back it just slips out. You see the, the two lugs which stick out here and the, these threaded uh, bolts fit through the action itself um, through a bedded chassis into it's not quite a v-block but it looks a little bit like a v-block where the barrel sits uh, once these are done up nice and tight this is a very very secure hold and what you will note is that in order to ensure that the head spacing is correct the bolt actually locks into the barrel itself which you can see here and because this is done in the factory this ensures that for each caliber change the head spacing is spot on every time. Turning our attention to the bolt a second, you will see that uh, we have six locking lugs in total in three rows. Um, Mauser are famous for their M98 action with a fixed claw extractor. We, we don't have that on this. In fact, the system that we have is very similar to what you will find on a Tika, where you have a, a plunger ejector and a, a sprung extractor. Um, it's got a, it's a slightly different shape being a Mauser, but essentially it's the same and it works very well. What is quite unique about the M03 is the safety slash cocking mechanism. Whereas most bolts actually um, cock the firing pin on the forward and downstroke of the bolt, on the M03, the only thing that actually does is cycle the rifle, eject, and then reload the next case. So with a case loaded, the actual loading of the rifle is done with a safety lever. The action of pushing it over from S to F makes it ready to fire and is what cocks the, the firing pin. With this in place, it is a very, very safe system. One thing to note is that if you then want to make it on safe, you have to push the lever back over, but it won't just go. You have to depress this little uh, button here first. So the uh, the knack to this is to depress the button underneath while pressing the lever at the same time and then just gently letting it over. If you use it a couple of times you'll soon get the hang of it and uh, it's actually a very very simple and quiet system to use. Now you probably notice that this rifle doesn't actually have a scope on it at the moment and the reason for that is that there is a quick detach system that is supplied by Mauser. Well, you actually have to buy the bridge mount as a separate piece, which is a, a small sticking point because it adds another 450 pounds to your rifle. But it is very, very well made, very well machined and finished, and works like a treat. Um, turning our attention for a moment to the, the magazine, you will note that the magazine is quite large if you consider that what we're shooting here is 243. And the reason for that is the same as I explained for the actual action size itself. This single magazine takes um, all the, the calibers from level 2 up to 375, and that's why it has to be this, this size. Um, in terms of how it functions, it works very nice. It loads um, very firmly, and actually cycling bolts in this is a joy. Now the M03 comes with a set trigger. If you push the trigger forward, it becomes a hair trigger. It's very, very fine, and you have to be very careful if you use this when hunting that you don't uh, release a round that you're not intending to release. I have to say that I, I've used it on the range, and I, I just wouldn't use it hunting. It's, I can't personally get a grip of exactly uh, where it's going to release. I much prefer the standard trigger without it being set. Now, I've obviously shot this rifle a lot during the time that I've had it. When I first got it I put um, quite a few factory rounds through it. Uh, it seems to like the 100 grain very well. Um, the 95 Hornady's that I, I put through it also worked but not the groups weren't quite as good as the Seiko 100 grains. Um, I did put some 70 grain Federals through it uh, and that again that was shooting about about the inch mark. But what it really seemed to like was um, the 105 grain geckos. Uh, readers of Sporting Rifle will see that I've used them in quite a lot of rifles that I test over the last 12 months actually. This M03 uh, just puts those 105 grains into about three quarters of an inch every time. Um, so that's what we're going to use here to go and shoot a group and I'll let you see how it shoots.
Well, out of 100 yards, the rifle doing exactly what I knew it could do already. I'm just over three quarters of an inch, but that's probably my shooting more than anything else. Uh, just for a bit of fun, took it up to 270 yards there and shooting into about two and a half inches, just lying off a row sack. The Mauser MO3 is a great rifle, and you know, if you've got the money to spend and you want a very, very nice piece of engineering, you should definitely think about it. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.